the Ford GT Owner's Manual. Introduction about this manual. Thank you for choosing Ford Performance. If you have owned a Ford Performance vehicle before, welcome back. If this is your first Ford Performance vehicle, welcome to the family. We are confident that our dedication to performance, quality, craftsmanship, and customer service will provide you with many miles of exhilarating, safe, and comfortable driving. We strive to build engaging vehicles that involve the driver in every aspect of the driving experience. Although performance is at the heart of every Ford performance vehicle, we go further. Our goal is to deliver comprehensive, complete, vehicle, paying close attention to the smallest details, such as the sound of the exhaust, the quality of the interior materials, and the functionality and the comfort of the seats. To make sure that you enjoy not only exceptional performance, but an outstanding driving environment as well. In this vehicle, we express the philosophy through the use of lightweight materials, a sophisticated powertrain, an outstanding chassis, dynamics and aerodynamics. This manual provided information specific to your Ford GT. By referring to this manual, you can identify those features, controls, and specifications unique to your new Ford GT. To assist you with any questions or concerns regarding your vehicle, we established the Ford GT Concierge. Contact your Ford GT Concierge the number listed if you need assistance. At a glance, unique features, vehicle structure, carbon fiber tub and body shell, aluminum structure for and aft of tub, steel roll cage integrated into the tub, powertrain, mid-engine 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6, 7-speed dual-clutch automated manual transmission, chassis, electronic hydraulic controlled torsion bar front and rear suspension systems, with ride height varied depending on drive mode, front end lift feature for driveway approaches and speed bumps, independent front and rear suspension with unequal length upper and lower control arms, carbon ceramic brake discs, Brembo six piston front and four piston rear calipers, 20 inch by 8.5 inch forged alloy front wheels with 245 by 35 R20 Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. Starting and stopping the engine. General information. Warning. Extended idling at high engine speeds can produce very high temperature in the engine and exhaust system, creating the risk of fire or other damage. Warning. Do not park idle or drive your vehicle on dry grass or other dry ground cover. The emission system heats up the engine department and exhaust system creating the risk of fire. If you disconnect the battery, your vehicle may exhibit some unusual driving characteristics for approximately five miles. After you reconnect it, this is because the engine management system must realign itself with the engine. You can disregard any unusual driving characteristics during this period. The powertrain control system meets all Canadian interference causing equipment standard requirements regulating the impulse, electrical field, or radio noise. When you start the engine, avoid pressing the accelerator pedal before and during operation. Only use the accelerator pedal when you have system difficulty starting the engine. Keyless starting. Note, the keyless starting system may not function if the key is close to the metal objects or the electronic device, such as cellular phones. Notes. A valid key must be present inside your vehicle to switch the ignition on and start the engine. Ignition modes. 
your keyless starting system has three modes. Off, turns the ignition off. Without applying the brake pedal, press and release the button once. When the ignition is in the mode, or when the engine is running, but the vehicle is not moving. On, all electrical cir circuits are operational and the warning lamps and indicators illuminate. Without applying the brake pedal, press and release the button once. Start starts the engine. Press the brake pedal and then press the button for any length of time. Steering wheel lock. The steering wheel locks automatically when you leave your vehicle and take the intelligence access key with you. The steering wheel unlocks automatically when you enter your vehicle with the intelligent access key. Note, you may need to turn the steering wheel left or right. If the wheel does not unlock completely, this may happen in certain situations, such as parking your vehicle on a steep grade. Starting the engine. When you start the engine, the idle speed increases. This helps to warm up the engine. If the engine idle speed does not slow down automatically, have your vehicle checked by an authorized dealer. Notes. You can crank the engine for a total of 60 seconds without the engine starting before the starting system temporarily disables. The 60 seconds does not have to be all at once. For example, you can crank the engine three times for 20 seconds each without the engine starting to reach the 60 second time limit. If you exceed the cranking time, you cannot attempt to start the engine for at least 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, you have 15 second time limit to crank the engine. You need to wait 60 minutes before you can crank the engine again for 60 seconds. Before starting the engine, check the following. Make sure all occupants fasten their seatbelts. Make sure the headlamps and electrical accessories are off. Make sure the parking brake is on. Move the transmission selector into park. Do not touch the accelerator pedal. You must have your intelligence access key in the vehicle in order to shift the transmission out of park. Number one, fully press the brake pedal. Press the engine start stop button. The system does not function if the key frequencies are jammed, the key battery has no charge, if you are unable to start the engine, do the following. Number one, place the key fob under the rubber mat in front of the engine start stop button. With the key in the position, press the brake pedal and then the engine stop start button to switch the ignition on and start your vehicle. Note, if the vehicle falls to start, replace the key fob battery. The fast restart feature allows you to restart the engine within 20 seconds of switching it off, even if a valid key is not present. Within 20 seconds of switching the engine off, press the brake pedal and press the start stop button. After 20 seconds have expired, you can no longer restart the engine without the key present inside your vehicle. Once the engine has started, it remains running until you press the start stop button. Even if the system does not detect a valid key. If you open and close a door while the engine is running, the system searches for a valid key. You cannot restart the engine if the system does not detect a valid key within 20 seconds. If you cannot start the engine after three attempts, wait 10 seconds and follow this procedure. Number one, fully press the brake pedal. Move the transmission selector to the park position. Number three, fully press the accelerator pedal and hold it there. Number four, press the start stop button once. Stopping the engine when your vehicle is stationary. Number one, move the transmission selector to the park position. Press the start stop button once. Number three, apply the parking brake. Note, the switch is off the ignition. 
all electrical circuits, warning lamps, and indicators. Stopping the engine when your vehicle is moving. Number one, move the transmission selector to the neutral position and use the brakes to bring your vehicle to a safe stop. Number two, when your vehicle has stopped, park will engage automatically. Press and hold the start stop button for one second or press it three times within two seconds. Number four, apply the parking brake. Track use. Operating at high speed and on track days, your vehicle is capable of sustained high speeds and track day driving. Follow the guidelines for braking in the tires and powertrain before operating your vehicle at high speeds on a track. Note, obey all traffic laws and only operate your vehicle at locations designed to do so safely. Note, for a detailed description of what your vehicle's new limited warranty covers, see the Ford GT warranty guide provided to you along with your owner's manual. Before operating your vehicle at high speeds, Follow these guidelines. Overall vehicle preparation. Inspect wheels and tires for wear and damage. Replace any damaged wheels or tires. Torque the wheel lug nuts to the proper specification, 150 pounds per foot. Inspect all aerodynamic grills and cooling system components for damage. Make sure there's no debris or non-factory installed protective films or equipment that could obstruct airflow. Verify your tires have the correct tire pressure. See the section that follows for tire pressure specifications. Do not operate your vehicle at high speeds while carrying cargo. Brake system preparation. Your vehicle has cargo ceramic brake rotors that require extra care and inspection methods including measuring their weight and reviewing the surface condition. Inspect the brake system for wear or damage. Replace worn or below specification brake pads, rotors, or cooling hoses. Make sure that the cross drilling holes in the rotors are open and free of debris. Prior to track use, replace the brake fluid with fresh Motorcraft Ford DOT 4LV high performance brake fluid or other DOT compliant fluid with a dry boiling point greater than 500 degrees Fahrenheit. From a sealed container, do not use silicone or DOT 5 brake fluids. Powertrain preparation. Make sure the engine oil, coolant, transmission fluids, and hydraulic system fluid have received proper maintenance, are clean, and dare at the appropriate capacity. Allow the powertrain to warm up and reach normal operating temperature. Your vehicle has electronic controls to reduce power or limit engine RPM to reduce powertrain temperatures if required. Regularly check the engine oil level during the event. Maintain the engine oil at or near the max mark on the engine oil dipstick. Course vehicle preparation. Your Ford GT is already set up from the factory for road and track use. But if you plan to participate in road course track days, we recommend the following chassis settings for optimal tire wear and handling performance. All settings are at normal ride height and curb loading condition, full fluids, no passengers or cargo. Tire pressure hot, front. 33 PSI. Tire pressure hot rear. Setting 33 PSI. After your track day is complete and your vehicle has cooled down, return the tire pressure to the specifications listed on the vehicle place card. Driving hints. Breaking in. You need to break in new tires for approximately 300 miles. 
During this time, your vehicle may exhibit some unusual driving characteristics. You should try not to drive your Ford GT aggressively for the first 600 miles of vehicle operation. This will allow for proper brake in the powertrain and braking systems. For the first 600 miles, do not apply high load at low engine speed. Do not drive the vehicle at a sustained high speed, high load. Avoid driving the vehicle at th full throttle. Drive the vehicle at varying road and engine speeds. Do not drive in competition and race track conditions. Do not use launch control. If you are going to use the vehicle on the racetrack, Right after break-in, change the oil after break-in. Cold engine operation. The design of your GT restricts engine power and RPM when the engine is cold. The engine RPM and power output will be reduced until the engine reaches full operating temperature. Hot engine shutdown. You should allow your Ford GT engine to cool down for a few minutes prior to shutdown after your speed of or high performance driving, allowing the engine to run at late loads and or idle for a few minutes will reduce overall engine oil and coolant temperatures. Driving through water. Warning. Do not drive through flowing or deep water as you may lose control of your vehicle. Before driving through standing water, check the depth. Do not drive through water that is higher than the sidewall of the front tire. If the water is up onto the wheel, do not proceed. When driving through a puddle, drive slowly to avoid splashing the water into the engine air intake. When driving through standing water, drive very slowly and do not stop your vehicle. Your brake performance and traction may be limited. After driving through water and as soon as it is safe to do so, lightly press the brake pedal to dry the brakes and to check that they work. Check that the horn works. Check that the exterior light works. Turn the steering wheel to check that the steering Power Assist works. Floor mats. To install the floor mats, position the floor mat eyelet over the retention post and press down and to lock in position. Make sure the hook and loop fastener is properly attached to the floor at the front edge of the driving side floor mat. To remove the floor mat, reverse the installation procedure. Note, regularly check the floor mats to make sure they are secure. Driving aids. Steering. To help prevent damage to the power steering, never hold the steering wheel at its furthest turning points until it stops for more than three to five seconds when the engine is running. Do not operate the vehicle with a low hydraulic fluid level. Some noise is normal during operation. If excessive, check the low hydraulic fluid level before seeking service by your dealer. Heavy or uneven efforts may be caused by low hydraulic fluid. Check for low hydraulic fluid level before seeking service by your dealer. Do not overfill the hydraulic fluid as this may result in leaks from the reservoir. If the power steering system breaks down, or if the engine is off, you can manually steer the vehicle, but it takes more effort. If the steering wanders or pulls, check for an in properly inflated tire, uneven tire wear, loose or worn suspension components, loose or steering components, Improper vehicle alignment at high crown in the road and high crosswinds may also be make the steering seem to wander or pull. Drive mode control.
drug mode selection, your vehicle has five selectable drug modes that deliver an enhanced driving experience through a suite of sophisticated electronic vehicle systems. In response to vehicle use and driving conditions, the selection of the drive mode optimizes handling and powertrain response. This provides a single location to control multiple systems performance settings. Using selectable drive modes to change the drive mode setting, use the rotary switch on the left side of the steering wheel. Note, to engage and disengage track or VMAX drive modes, the car must be at a stop for the transmission in park and the engine running. This is necessary since the vehicle ride height changes. You can change between normal, wet, and sport drive modes while the vehicle is in motion. Modes. Normal. Use the normal driving in dry conditions. Advanced track stability control is active and cannot be adjusted. Ride height is set to high and suspension damping is set to normal. Comfort damping can be selected with the console switch. Launch control is available. Transmission automatic shift calibration is set to normal. Rear wing deploys at speeds above 90 mph and retracts when the speed drops below 81 miles per hour. Air brake deactivates at speeds above 75 miles per hour when the brakes are applied with moderate force. Sport. Use for sport driving in dry conditions. Advanced track stability control is active but can be adjusted by the use of the stability control button on the console. Ride height is set to the high and suspension dampening is set to the sport. Comfort damping cannot be selected. Launch control is available. Transmission automatic shift calibration is set to sport. Turbocharger anti-lag calibration is active. Rear wing deploys at speeds above 70 miles per hour and reacts when the speed drops below 45 miles per hour. Air brakes activates at speeds above 75 miles per hour when the brakes are applied with moderate force. Wet, used for driving in wet conditions. Advanced track stability control is active and cannot be adjusted. Ride height is set to high and suspension dampening is set to normal. Comfort dampening can be selected with the console switch. Launch control is not available. Transmission is automatic shift calibration is set to normal. Rear wing deploys at speeds above 90 miles per hour and retracts when the speed drops below 81 miles per hour. Air brake activates at speeds above 75 miles per hour when the brakes are reapplied and moderate force. Track. Optimize settings for the track handling performance. The track drive mode should only be used in a track environment, not on the street. Due to the low ride height, this setting can only be selected while your vehicle is in park with the engine running and you need to confirm the selection. Advanced track stability control is active, but can be adjusted use of the stability control button on the console. Ride height is set to low and suspension dampening is set to track. Comfort dampening cannot be selected due to low ride height. Launch control is available. Transmission automatic shift calibration is set to sport. Turbocharger anti-lag calibration is active. Rear wing deploys and remains deployed while in track mode. When you change to another mode, the wing lowers once you start to drive your vehicle, not while it is stopped. Air brake activates the speeds above 75 miles per hour. When the brakes are applied with moderate force, VMAX, optimized setting for achieving maximum velocity. The VMAX mode should only be used in a controlled track environment, not on the street due to the low wide height 
This setting can only be selected while your vehicle is in park, with the engine running, and you need to confirm the selection. Advanced Track Stability Control is active and cannot be adjusted. Ride Height is set to Low and Suspension Dampening is set to Track. Comfort Dampening cannot be selected due to Low Ride Height. Launch Controls is available. Transmission Automatic Shift Calibration is set to Sport. Rear Wing does not deploy. Air brake activates at speeds above 110 miles per hour. When the brakes are applied with moderate force, note, when you shut down your vehicle in VMAX or track mode, the vehicle returns to the normal ride height. When you restart your vehicle in VMAX or track mode, you need to be re-acknowledged the drive mode selection in the information display in order for the drive mode to reactivate. If you do not make a selection, the vehicle returns to the previously selected drive mode. Transmission. Automatic transmission. Your Ford GT vehicle is equipped with a 7-speed, dual-clutch automatic transmission. In drive, the transmission shifts automatically, or you can shift with the paddle shifters. In manual mode, you must shift the transmission with the paddle shifters. Understanding the positions of your automatic transmission. Fully press down the brake pedal. Move the selector to the desired gear. Park. With the transmission in park, your vehicle locks the transmission and prevents the wheels from turning. Always come to a complete stop before putting your vehicle into park. Automatic return to park. Note, this feature does not operate with your vehicle, is in the stay in neutral mode. Your vehicle has a feature that automatically shifts your vehicle into park. When any of the following conditions occur, you turn the vehicle off, you open the driver's door with your seatbelt unlatched. Your seatbelt is unlatched when the driver's door is open. If you turn your vehicle off when moving, your vehicle first shifts into neutral until it slows down enough to shift into park automatically. Notes. If you have waited an extended period of time, two to 15 minutes, before starting your vehicle. Unlatching your seatbelt causes this feature to activate, even with the driver's door closed. Note, this feature may not work properly if the door is ajar. Switch is malfunctioning. If your door ajar indicator does not illuminate when you open the driver's door, or the indicator illuminates with the driver's door closed, see your authorized dealer. Reverse. With the selector in reverse, your vehicle moves backwards. Always come to a complete stop before shifting into and out of reverse. Neutral. With the selector in neutral, your vehicle can be started and is free to roll. Hold the brake pedal down when in the position. Stay in neutral mode. Stay in neutral mode allows your vehicle to stay in neutral when you exit your vehicle. Your vehicle must be stationary to enter this mode. To enter, stay in neutral mode. With the engine running, release the parking brake if applied, press down the brake pedal and press the parking brake release switch on the center console. Press down the brake pedal and move the transmission selector to neutral. A message appears in your display screen. Press the manual button to enter stay in neutral mode. Another message appears in your display screens confirming neutral mode is engaged. Stay in neutral mode remains engaged as long as the engine is running. If the engine is turned off, 
a 30 minute timer starts and appears in your display screen. To exit, stay in neutral mode. Press down the brake pedal and select a different gear. Drive. Drive is the normal driving position for the best fuel economy. In the drive position, the transmission automatically shifts through gears 1 through 7. Manual. To select manual, place the transmission selector in drive and press M button in the middle of the selector. Once you select manual, you must use the paddle shifters to upshift or downshift the transmission. To exit manual and return to drive, press the M button again. Select shift automatic transmission. Your vehicle is equipped with a select shift automatic transmission, which gives you the ability to change gears up or down as desired. In order to prevent the engine from running at too low of an RPM, which may cause it to stall. Select shift still automatically makes some downshifts. If it has determined that you have not downshifted in time. Although select shift makes some downshifts for you, it still allows you to downshift at any time as long as select shift determines that no damage occurs to the engine from over revving. Engine damage may occur if you maintain excessive engine revving without shifting. Select shift does not automatically upshift, even if the engine is approaching the RPM limit. It must be shifted manually by use of the F shift plus pedal. When using manual M shift mode, pay attention to the shift indicator on the top rim of the steering wheel and the RPM indicator in the instrument cluster. Use the paddles on the steering wheel to shift. Pull the right paddle plus to upshift. Pull the left paddle minus to downshift.